Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is controlling patterns of surfaces. The question submitted came along with a drawing. We'll show you the drawing here in a second, but the question was, we have a profile of a surface callout for five surfaces. Two of these surfaces are also specified as datums within the profile itself, i.e. sort of a chicken and egg sort of situation. There are questions about the interpretation. Please see attached and advise. So let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing here. The drawing shows we have a profile callout to five surfaces, one, two, three, four, and five surfaces. And again, it's controlling that profile to 12 thousandths with respect to A and B. A is identified as this feature right here, and B is identified as this surface right here. And so we can see that the callout itself that is tolerancing these surfaces is using these surfaces themselves as the origin. And this does create a bit of a chicken and egg situation. Uh, in fact, we can kind of visualize it here. If we know true profile, right? We know the true profile based off all these basic dimensions, defining the angles and the orientations and the lengths of these surfaces with respect to themselves. Uh, we know that true profile. We know what the profile should look like. Basically, what does the CAD tell us, right? Uh, we also know that from the profile callout, we have a zone of 12 thousandths. That zone exists like this. So it's six thousandths normal to true profile either direction. So again, 12 thousandths of our profile zone total. Then in order to simulate this zone, it is located and orientated to some referenced datums. Now those referenced datums are part of this profile itself. So in order to inspect this, we would need to picture some sort of datum simulators for this feature. And if our surface looked like this red line in reality, we would need to make sure to align the part to the datum simulators. The datum simulators being simulating a flat planar surface here and a flat planar surface here. So we have the two gray surfaces here as our datum simulators. And so we would need to bring the part into contact with our datum simulators. Uh, and so we would level off on the three high points down here for A, and then two points of contact over here for datum feature B. And now we've simulated datum A and B. But we need to center the true profile on our datums or the location with respect to those datums. And so what we see here is now our true profile is not centered on our datums, right? Our true profile is part of our datum structure. So there's zero location orientation. So we need to now shift the center of our zone to be on top of or located to our datums. Uh, and because they're located zero inches away because they're part of the profile, we need to shift the center of that. So iteratively, we need to shift this over and now the surface might look like this. And so really what we're doing is we're losing all of this tolerance zone in here because if we ever existed inside this part right here, well, we would have to recenter our tolerance zone. So really, we're just kind of doing a chicken and egg, always chasing ourselves. It's not an ideal situation to be in. So how do we get around that? In order to get around it, we're going to repicture the true profile, and we're going to get rid of the referenced datums. So we're just going to control the shape of this profile, right? As long as that entire surface can be inside that tolerance zone, we've met our profile control, right? So that's really qualifying the surface. And then we can still utilize this surface here and this surface here as datum A and datum B if we would like to control other features on this part to datum feature A and datum feature B like we have. And then we just have a simple simulator like we showed here. But there's not that iterative control and we get the full control, right? Now, if these surfaces are crucial, uh, I would recommend a rather tight tolerance to control the orientation between this surface and this surface, essentially qualifying them, right? We can control the flatness of this surface and we can control the flatness and perpendicularity of this surface all in one fell swoop with this one profile of surface callout. So we're really qualifying two datum features together with this one. So we don't need to requalify these at all. And so we can control all of this and we can have our datum simulators like we normally would digitally or physically. Uh, and we would just make sure to three points of contact on datum feature A with datum simulator A, and then just two points of contact. So basically we'd bring the part in, set it on this surface, and then slide it over so it butts up against this surface, and then we wouldn't disengage those surfaces. And we can measure everything with respect to that datum reference frame. Now that datum reference frame is only locked in 
five degrees of freedom. So the translation in and out of the page would have to be locked in by some other feature on this part, which in the question when it was submitted said they do have other datum features that are fully constraining the rest of this part. So that is one option, right? So again, we're dropping that off, controlling the form of that, but we're still utilizing these surfaces as datum features. The third option, which gets very complicated, so bear with me, is we will drop off the datum feature symbols here. So we're not identifying these as datum features anymore, these two surfaces. We're actually identifying all of them together as a pattern of features. Now, as a pattern of features, as a pattern of surfaces, uh, it's not necessarily a true feature of size or even irregular feature of size, um, but we can utilize these as an advanced datum. All five of them can act together. And if we ever reference any other part on this drawing, so if we have a feature control frame, whatever symbol that might be, for example, position to some tolerance to datum A, we can reference that datum at MMB. And now we can create this theoretical boundary from that tolerance zone that was for the profile control. And again, the profile control was tr true profile defined by basic dimensions and it was 12 thousands in width. So this upper boundary here is our MMB boundary. That is where the most amount of material would ever exist, right? And so we can visualize this boundary. In fact, we can calculate that boundary would be, um, but we can see it over here. And now we can gauge up against this boundary. So we can have a physical gauge here using MMB. And then if we reference this feature at MMC, we can have a physical gauge for any features that reference that. So this is directly lending a hand to creating functional gauges using the MMB boundaries. And now we get some datum shifts. So as you can see here, if there's irregularity on this surface, we can slide this part over and we can see that we can have a little bit of datum shift. And again, we can shift the part over to the left and engage three points of contact, maybe here, here, and here. Or we can shift the part over to the right and we can engage three points of contact, maybe here, here, and here. But again, we'd have to have at least three points of contact anywhere on this surface to fully constrain translation this way, this way, and rotation this way. And again, since this is a three-dimensional part, in other words, going in, in and out of the screen, we're controlling the rotation in and out of the page this way, as well as the rotation in and out of the page this way. So the only thing we're not controlling with this is the translation in and out of the page, right? So uh, if we're looking at the in and out of this page, that is the last translation that A cannot control. So we would need something else on the drawing to stop that translation if we would like to control that. So again, this is a very advanced datum. Again, it lends a hand to... Uh, inspecting things with a functional gauge and giving a single boundary that we can gauge up against that will allow datum shift if we reference datum A at MMB. So again, hopefully this answers your question and thanks again for submitting. Our goal is to be your best source for GDNT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.